Are you seeking a breakthrough from God? Have you prayed for progress, but it seems like nothing is visible? The truth is, your breakthrough is closer than you think. You don't see anything because you can't recognize the signs. If only you paid more attention, you'd see the signs that God is preparing something behind the scenes. Just like when a breakthrough is just around the corner, there will always be signals similar to how you perceive the scent of someone cooking in your kitchen. Even if you're not in the kitchen and can't see the food, you can smell it wherever you are in your apartment. However, it's sensible for you to understand the signs of your breakthrough so that you unknowingly don't disrupt what God is doing or walk out of the waiting room prematurely. What are these signs? Be sure to watch this video until the end, as I will talk about 12 things that will happen when your breakthrough is near. You shouldn't miss any of them as they can occur at different times in your life. Once you understand them, you'll always be able to rejoice in your breakthrough, and you'll also know what to do to ensure manifestation, what to avoid, and how to maintain your breakthrough when it finally happens. Before we continue, please subscribe to this channel. Not every man desires a breakthrough in some area. No, everyone wants to hold a steady position, everyone desires change. However, there is no universal definition of a breakthrough as it all depends on individual needs and perceptions. In my voice, this could be liberation from the shackles of darkness or a downpour of abundant prosperity, whatever it may be. God is working on your behalf and it will surely manifest. I know you've been waiting for this breakthrough for so long that your mind, soul and body are looking forward to it. You've even concluded that the manifestation has been delayed for too long. But I'm here to tell you that you serve a God who is never a second late. He always remains true to his word. He hasn't forgotten about you. He is actually working day and night to fulfill your heart's desires. He knows you're ready to give up, and that's precisely why he's sending you signs through this message. So what are these signs? Number 1. Divine separation from harmful things and breakthroughs in people often lead to a divine turn in the life of the recipient, often marking the beginning of a new season. However, before a breakthrough can occur, God must separate you from certain things. He might remove a bad habit from your life when you suddenly find yourself having a deep hatred for a habit you really enjoyed. God separates you because He knows this habit won't serve you well when your breakthrough comes. For example, it could be a terrible habit of mismanaging your money, but you trust him for a financial breakthrough. God won't answer immediately because he knows that if he does, you might spend his blessings frivolously or mismanage them. The first thing he'll do is deal with this habit. Once he sees change, then he can bless you because the habit is dead. You can use the breakthrough for his glory. So when you start noticing changes in your habits, know that your breakthrough is near. God might also separate you from people who are harmful to your breakthrough. Making friends is good. Connecting with people is paramount. However, not all good connections are godly. Not all connections are beneficial for you. Some of your friends may not value your divine progression. They don't want you to move forward. Of course, you might not see this, but God knows what you don't. Therefore, before he opens his floodgates of blessings on you, he'll first weed these people out of your life. They could be pessimistic people, those who will always lead you to sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 33 says, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. This isn't limited to good characters alone. Bad company can ruin your glorious destiny. Bad company can hinder your breakthrough. So don't be upset when God starts to root out some people from the valley of your life. It's a sign that your breakthrough is close to number two from one trial to another. Number one, being part of everyday life. It's completely normal to face a small obstacle from time to time. However, it's a whole different story when you're facing one terrible situation after another. You might be recovering from an illness today and the next day your son or spouse catches it. Your extended family seems unconcerned about you losing your job because there's opposition in your organization. If you're in such a situation, I offer comfort from God's word. This is not a sign that you've committed a terrible sin or that God has forgotten you. No. Instead, this is a great sign that your breakthrough is near. Does this mean that God orchestrated these events? Can we conclude that he pushed these terrible events forward only to comfort you later with your breakthrough, which is not the case? 
God does not create evil. He does not bring about evil, even though you may allow it. So who is responsible for these evil events? The devil. And why would he do this? Because he knows your breakthrough is close, so he pushes these events towards you to make you lose faith in God. He knows that when this happens, you'll lose your breakthrough. Therefore, you must be very sensitive to the enemy's attacks, regardless of what you might face. Know that your trials are only pushing you towards your breakthrough. Hold on to God's word in Psalm chapter 30, verse 5, which says, Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing comes in the morning. So, rejoice when it seems one trial welcomes another in your life. It's a sign that your breakthrough is not far away. Number 3. You become restless in your comfort zone. Sometimes satisfaction isn't noble. Maybe God wants to do something in your life, but you're not ready. Yes, you cry and pray about it, but when God looks at your capacities, you're lacking. You haven't expanded to what can contain your breakthrough. So before God can bless you, He'll first push you out of your comfort zone. He'll make your land of satisfaction unbearable for you. He'll push you to the limit of your abilities. You'll have to chase after more before you can receive more. If a student attempts only one math exercise a week, but expects praise for an A on the exam, which won't come, he's satisfied with studying one sum a week, but this won't bring him a breakthrough in education. For such a person, God will make him see that no success will come. Instead, when the child disciplines himself more, he'll become outstanding. Because he stepped out of his comfort zone and this led to his breakthrough. So, when you find that God is pushing you out of your norm, you're on the path to your breakthrough. As you long for more, He will give them to you. When you step out of your comfort zone, you enter new dimensions and achieve results. This is a sign that your breakthrough is close. Number 4. Your desire to pray increases your spiritual strength and is crucial for the emergence of your glory. You won't achieve much if you don't pray more. So when your breakthrough is just around the corner, your spirit will crave more prayer. This means gathering enough strength to move massively towards your prosperity and desires. When the Israelites spent 70 years in Babylon, Daniel checked the book of Jeremiah and discovered it was time for the Jews to gain their freedom. Then he began to pray fervently, driven by what he read. He knew from the scriptures that their release from captivity was near. Here's a question. Why did God wait for Daniel to pray before fulfilling his words? After all, he was the one who said they would enjoy freedom again after 70 years. Why didn't he grant them freedom until Daniel prayed? The answer is simple. God wants mankind to remind him. He waited for someone to search the scriptures and declare, Lord, the time has come. And as this person makes this declaration through prayer, similarly, God needs you to stand in the gap for yourself. He needs you to cry out that you need a breakthrough now. The presence of the Holy Spirit within you will continue to urge you to pray because He knows your breakthrough is close. However, the mistake many Christians make is not yielding to this urge they feel. They feel compelled to pray in the Spirit, but they quench it. When you do this, you're delaying your breakthrough. But when you give in to prayer, your breakthrough keeps steadily drawing closer to you, and before you know it, you're already basking in glory. Number 5. You often feel like God isn't hearing your prayers. This is a common sign when you're just a few steps away from your breakthrough. You pray, but it feels like something has locked your cries and requests in a box. It seems like no one is listening. You keep looking up to God, but it seems like God isn't hearing you, is on leave, or is deliberately avoiding you. But that's not true. God hears your prayers, even when it seems like He's silent or not hearing your prayers. He's working behind the scenes of your life. Imagine God as a chef. You're hungry and in immediate need of food. However, the process will take anywhere from 30 minutes to one hour. If you keep shouting in the chef's ears, nothing will happen. You can continue to cry and roll on the floor. He won't do anything to help you because what you need is still in the process. And until the end of this process, the chef can't serve you anything. Similarly, with God, you can't see Him doing anything. It seems like He's not hearing your prayers, but the truth is that your breakthrough is near. You just need to be more patient and continue praying. Don't rush the process because that will cause you to miss your breakthrough. 
A common example in the scriptures is the story of the Israelites when the Egyptians enslaved them. Exodus chapter 3 verses 7 to 10 says, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers and I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, and Jebusites. Now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. While God was saying these words, the Israelites had no clue. They didn't know he had heard their cries. They thought he was indifferent to their suffering. They never imagined that God saw their oppression. But here God is saying that he heard it all. He knows it all. They prayed and thought God wasn't listening, but he was. While they were weeping for years, he was preparing Moses until the appointed time. Let this uplift your heart. God hears your prayers, and yes, your breakthrough is near. Number six, you feel the temptation to settle for less as you move towards your breakthrough, a temptation presented by the devil. With many counterfeit options, you need to know this isn't God's plan for your life. No matter how big and glamorous the options might seem, they're nothing compared to what God has planned for your life. When you're desperately in need of a breakthrough, something will seem like it. The answer is not to let the devil deceive you. This is not God's plan for you. He has a clearly defined destination in your life. So don't settle for less. Don't choose an option out of desperation. Let God be your guide. This is your antidote to settling for less. Ask the Holy Spirit for his guidance at every crossroads. Confirm whether it's God's will for you to choose this option. Once you get confirmation from God that this is not your path, take a step back. Don't give the devil a chance to dim the intensity of your glory. When you settle for less, you blot the realization of your true breakthrough. And guess what? You just allowed someone else to enjoy what divinely belongs to you. So, if you don't want that to happen, keep your heart focused on God. Yes, you will feel pressure to settle for less. Don't take this merely as a sign that your breakthrough is near. Number 7. Strong resistance and disappointment from your family. Waiting on God doesn't make sense to everyone. So if you're trusting God for your breakthrough, you must prepare your mind to face significant pressure from home and society. Because they can't see what you see. They can't match what you're prepared to do. For this reason, they will always be against you. But the good news is this resistance isn't bad. It's a sign that your breakthrough is near. The enemy knows this, so he keeps throwing these resistances at you. He wants to weaken your spirit and make you lose sight of what God wants to do in your life. If you're experiencing this in your life, you're not alone. David was in your shoes. His father sent him to visit his brothers on the battlefield to check on their well-being and bring them supplies. David did as his father instructed. But when he arrived, Goliath came out again and threatened the Israelites. David knew this was his breakthrough. He wanted to be sure of what the king would do for the person who killed this man. But as he was doing this, he faced resistance from his older brother. 1 Samuel Chamuel 17 verses 28 to 30 says, When David's older brother Eliab heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited and wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. What have I done now? said David. Can't I even speak? He then turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter, and the people gave him the same answer as before. Eliab knew who David was. He knew that God had chosen him. Therefore, he tried to discourage David from his breakthrough. But David acted wisely. He responded wisely and continued on his path to glory. That's what you should do too. Don't try to fight the disappointment and resistance. All you need to do is face God and your goals head on. This resistance is a sign that what you're seeking is just around the corner. Number 8. You begin to doubt God's promises. Doubt is the enemy's tool, and guess what he uses this weapon when your breakthrough is just around the corner. The reason is simple. He doesn't want you to enter into God's plan for you. So he'll turn your mind to past events when God was silent. As a human, remembering, 
this will make you doubt God's promises. He'll give you a thousand and one reasons why God will let you down, and as soon as doubt takes root in your heart, you start looking for alternatives. You begin to carve out a path for yourself. However, this will never bring about good results. How do I know? Sarah did the same thing. God assured Abraham that he would bless him with offspring, yet Sarah doubted God's promise. So she thought of an alternative. She went to Abraham and made him go to her servant Hagar. This led to the birth of a son. Soon the boy despised Sarah. It was then that Sarah regretted her actions, but it was too late. God will eventually fulfill his word in your life. Number 9. Distractions from your goals and various temptations. There's immense power in focus. When you focus on a goal over a long period, you will undoubtedly become successful at it. And when you achieve success, your breakthrough will occur. I just described the devil's headache. He doesn't want you to focus on your goals. He doesn't want you to enjoy your breakthrough. So he starts introducing distractions into your life. This distraction might come in the form of money. He might tempt you into pursuing a business that God didn't intend for you. When you fall for this bait, he traps you and derails you. Distraction can come through your friends. At a time when you should be working on what will trap you in financial prosperity, they'd prefer you to go out and have fun. However, God wants you to do this at this moment. Therefore, you need to sharpen your spiritual discernment. You need to know what God wants you to do at every moment. Another is temptation. It's very similar to distraction, however, temptations can change the course of your life forever. You may never come out of it if you fall. If Joseph had slept with Potiphar's wife, he would never have been able to sit beside Pharaoh. He would never have become the prime minister. He would end up in prison. But he would never be able to interpret dreams if he did not cry out for mercy. This could take a huge part of his life. Therefore, beware of these two dreadful weapons of the devil. As soon as you start to see or feel that they are controlling you, you need to do this so as not to miss your breakthrough. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 to 9 says, Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. You will experience more spiritual battles. Your breakthrough will not come on a golden platter. You won't get what you desire by crossing your legs and watching your favorite TV show. That will never happen. To access your glory, you need to fight battles. Why do some enemies never want this? To achieve their dream, they don't want you to engage in everything God has planned for you. So, to win this battle, you must fight. But who are your enemies? First, you need to deal with your flesh. If you really want your breakthrough, you must declare war on your flesh. Another enemy you'll have to deal with is the devil and his evil forces. With your strength, you need to use your spiritual weapons, which include God's word, prayers, and faith. Cut off negative thoughts about yourself. Proclaim God's words in your life. Command the evil to leave your life alone. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 says, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has been subjected to violence, and violent people have been raiding it. This verse tells you that your enemies understand no other language but spiritual violence, so don't hesitate to use what you have. And remember, you are fighting from a standpoint of victory. Jesus has already won the battle for you. Subtle messages of consolation from God. No matter how hard it may get, God will always remind you of His presence. So, while you pray and it seems like God isn't speaking, He sends subtle messages. You might want supernatural and immediate results, but God won't do it suddenly. He'll continue to communicate with you through the people around you, nature, and powerful messages like this. When you start experiencing this, it's God saying He will never leave nor forsake you. He's with you all the days of your life. Psalm chapter 23 verses 4 to 5 says, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. You know this verse, but God wants to open your eyes to a mighty truth today. The verse says God is with you as you walk through the darkest valley. Beloved, you might be in the darkest valley of your life right now. 
You've reached a point where nothing can sustain you except divine providence. Fear not, God says he is with you. And guess what? After the darkest valley, there will be a great banquet in front of your enemies. This means that after this moment in your life, what follows is your breakthrough. These are encouraging words from God to you today. Hold on to them and very soon your cup will overflow with blessings. A deep sense of peace? This is the culmination of it all, as God continues to send his words of assurance. You'll start to experience something that surpasses your understanding. While everyone else is screaming and crying about your plight, you just smile. Why? Because God promised to be with you? Nothing disturbs you because you are assured of his presence. You believed him that he will fulfill his word in your life. But if you've yet to experience this peace, I urge you to give your life to Jesus. He's the only one who can help you enjoy this peace through the Holy Spirit. Allow God to have his way, and when you do, you will start enjoying divine peace. This is the beginning of your breakthrough. Now that you know what happens when your breakthrough is near, how can you prepare to access it first? You need to challenge your status quo. If you've been hiding your talent, you must use it now. This is how you will access your breakthrough where it might even be hiding. The effort you've refused to explore for many years take a leap of faith today. God will show you your path. Next, you need to believe in God no matter what you're facing. You must decide to believe in God, maintaining unwavering faith in Him. You can even manifest your faith by dressing as if your breakthrough has already happened. If you're longing for a child, you might buy and keep baby clothes. Yes, it sounds silly, but you're challenging God. You're telling Him that you believe His words, even if you haven't noticed any signs of pregnancy. And if you're not expecting, you can still apply this leap of faith, tailor it to whatever breakthrough you need. God will answer your prayers, and while you do this, you must stay away from pessimistic people. When God separates you from those who disagree with your life, don't go back to them. Don't give them space in your life, regardless of what they might say. You let them back in, they will weaken your faith in God, they will dampen your vision, so stay away from them and move with like-minded individuals. When your breakthrough happens, it will find you in the right company. Then you should not follow worldly ideologies. Some social norms don't align with God's blueprint for you. They might not seem harmful externally, but in God's presence they are unacceptable, and if you don't rid yourself of them, they might hinder your breakthrough. In the world, taking bribes might be common. Yes, many have amassed wealth this way. However, a child of God should not define this as a breakthrough. It's unacceptable in God's eyes. Another thing you can do is rejoice with others when God grants them breakthroughs. This is one of the biggest mistakes many Christians make. They think God loves their neighbor more than them, so he answers their prayers quickly. No, this should not be never think this way about others. When God sees your pure heart, he will also respond to you. This leads me to five breakthrough blockers. Some of them are part of the signs, but highlighting their impact will help you steer clear of them. And what's first is envy and jealousy. Genesis chapter 30 verse 1 says, When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, she envied her sister. So she said to Jacob, Give me children or else I die. This verse illustrates envy and jealousy. Rachel was so envious of her sister that she saw in her husband her God so she could ask him for a child unknown to her. Her jealousy and envy were one of the reasons why God closed her womb. She couldn't bear children for a long time because of such an attitude. You can see this is a significant breakthrough blocker. So if you're envious of someone, be sure to let it go today. The second breakthrough blocker is fear. This two-letter word wields immense power over many souls. When God gives them a directive, they refuse to follow through because of fear. They're afraid to venture out into the deep. Yet that's precisely where their breakthrough lies. Their refusal to step out sabotages God's plan for them. But they keep wondering why God hasn't blessed them. They continue to pray and cry out to God. Maybe that's you. You need to let go of your fears and doubts. Do what God has told you to do. That's where your breakthrough is. That's how you can receive answers to your prayers. The third breakthrough blocker is giving up too easily. People lack the strength to persevere. They lack the fruit of endurance. 
They want quick results, but God doesn't work like that. He is a God of processes. If you're not prepared to persevere, you can't achieve your breakthrough. You must not give up. Don't you know that your breakthrough is just a step away? When you feel the intense heat to give up, keep deep deep in your soul, the anticipation for your breakthrough. Never let go of your faith, affirm that you will always wait for God. The fourth obstacle to breakthrough is a lack of prayer. To access your breakthrough, you must be prayerful. Why does the enemy not want your success? He will always attack you. But when you're always in a place of prayer, God will fight for you. He will always help you. Many Christians pray for a breakthrough but are actually grumbling and complaining. They might raise five prayer points in 10 minutes, but grumble for the next 25 minutes. This is not appealing to God. It can block your prayer. The glory of manifesting the fifth breakthrough blocker is apathy towards God's word. You trust God for financial or family breakthroughs, but you rarely read God's word. You hardly meditate on his promises. This is a significant barrier in your life. God can only enlighten your heart through his word. When you show apathy towards that same word, you block its light from shining on you. How can you then experience the breakthrough you in no way desire to destroy this wall? And to access your breakthrough, you need to keep your heart on God's word. When your breakthrough finally comes, what God expects from you first and foremost, you must acknowledge God's work in your life. Many quickly forget God's faithfulness in their lives. They praise their human efforts and boast about what they've done. Don't do this. When God instead answers your prayers, thank Him for what He's done in your life. Remember where you came from and thank Him for where He has placed you. Don't give room to pride and arrogance in your life. Don't place others above yourself. Instead, see them as you are. Remember, God who raised you can raise them too. Then you must bless others. God blessed you so you could extend a hand of love to others. Don't be stingy and hoard God's provision in your bank account. I'm not saying you become wasteful. No, but ensure you do more for the needy. Let your resources bless the kingdom of God. Your money may not be in finances even if it's a child. Make sure you train him or her in the way of the Lord. Don't spoil yours too much. That's how your breakthrough can bless the kingdom of God. Another thing you must do when God blesses you is to forgive those who hurt you during tough times. Many Christians have lashed out at people who wronged them as soon as they received their breakthroughs. It shouldn't be this way. God blessed you not so you could punish others. No, He wants you to forgive them. He turned their hate and oppression into a stepping stone to your glory. You should even thank them. God used them for your good. Be like Joseph. He forgave his brothers and fed them during a famine. Can you do this when God finally expands you? Are you prepared in your mind? This is what God expects from you. And finally, do not stop communicating with God. You must always remember that the devil is displeased with you. He is still hovering around you waiting for a loophole in your life. Therefore, you must be very sensitive and how you develop your spiritual sensitivity by communicating with God every day. This will keep you close to his heart. He will continue to give you instructions on what to do and what to avoid. You won't lose his blessings because he is your guide. God will never leave you. Your breakthrough is just around the corner. And through this message, God has prepared your mind. Believe in God and your breakthrough won't slip away from you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for showing me the signs that I'll see when my breakthrough is near. You didn't keep me in the dark. You've shed your light again. You've also shown what I should do to ensure I don't miss my divine breakthrough. I will keep all this within me and apply them when necessary. Lord, I ask you, please forgive me for all my sins. There were times when I tried to find my own way. I believed in the enemy's lie that made me stray from your plans for me. Please forgive me and guide my steps back to you. Lord, I pray that you push me out of my comfort zone. I should not get satisfaction from my surroundings. I must start following your plans. Help me to access what you have prepared for me. Beyond my boundaries, I must make a leap of faith. I must be exceptional. I apply extra effort. 
I do everything I can to be phenomenal. I refuse mediocrity. Please help me give me strength and direction to step into everything you've planned for my life. I should not sit by while my breakthrough passes by me. Jesus unleashed the spiritual power I need to fight all opposition. Society keeps trying to impose its ideologies on me. Give me the strength to withstand them. Spiritual forces of evil wampumize my faith in you. They continue to attack me with various temptations and distractions. Give me power over, over them. I should not succumb to pressure. I receive the courage of a lion and the strength of an eagle and no force can stop me from achieving my breakthroughs. I pray for you to strengthen my faith in you. Remove every root of fear and doubt within me. Destroy every wall of prayerlessness and spiritual apathy in my life. I must closely follow your promises for my life and not waver trusting in you. Break my alliance with pessimistic people. Separate me from those who disagree with your will for my life. Create a strong barrier between us. I am confident that my breakthrough is near, so I need people who will align with your plans for me. Connect me with those who will hold my hand on the path of destiny. Connect me with visionary leaders. I should not fall into the wrong company again. I should not create a path with people who will muffle my glory. And when you eventually bless my life, I promise to acknowledge your work. Many people will become proud and abandon your laws. I promise never to do that. I will always remember your laws and commandments because they are part of what orchestrated my breakthrough. I know I cannot access my breakthroughs on my own efforts, so, so I rely on you. And when you eventually do it, I promise to turn to you all the days of my life. I will ensure that my life blesses others. I will not hoard your blessings. Instead, I will allow blessings to reach others. I will increase my contribution to your kingdom. I know you will continue to bless my life as I do this. I will not harbor ill will towards anyone. I will forgive all who have caused me pain in the past. I promise always to be in the secret place. This has been my dwelling and yes, it will remain my dwelling forever. The devil will not steal my blessings. I know he is unhappy, but he is a defeated enemy. He will never prevail over my destiny. Thank you, Jesus, for answering my prayers. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If this prayer resonates with you, share this video with your loved ones. Thank you. See you in the next video.